Hello all, Corbin here from Corin.info. Happy to see you for a new video, taking advantage of this time between Christmas and New Year to thank you for your support. Thanks to you, I can make these videos. If you watch these videos, this video from YouTube and if not subscribed to Patreon, do not hesitate. Join us on Patreon.com, Corman, because it's thanks to you that I can make videos, update Corman.info and most importantly, you'll have advance access to all content. That's cool, right? Today, what will we discuss? Well, we'll talk about a tool that'll make you happy if you don't have much money. So if you are a developer, you may know GitHub Copilot, which is what we call a development assistant, an AI service, and it allows you to extend, let's say, a Visual Studio or similar tools. To be able to complete, to be able to help you write functions, to write code, it complements, etc. So, Copilot is a GitHub tool, so Microsoft if you want, which is not free, it's something you can have on a subscription for 20 bucks a month, well $19 a month in its basic version, and then if you're a company with a need for more people, etc. to make fine-tuned models, etc. It's $39. For individuals like us, that is to say enthusiasts, those who are not necessarily in a company, who need to take a business version, there is also the individual co-pilot version that does auto-completion, chat, etc. In summary, it's great for indie developers but requires annual payment of $100. And it's free for students, for teachers and for people who maintain well-known popular open source projects. So obviously this tool is awesome, I had already shown it to you, the thing is that it's paid and today I propose an alternative Tabi. So Tabi is the same thing as GitHub Copilot except that it's something you self-host and it's completely free since it's open source developed in Rust and very easy to integrate. You will have understood the interest of a tool like Tabi is to be able to use LLMs, therefore large language models, for free, independent, which are specialized in code. I'm thinking of Code Llama or Code Gen or similar. So if I examine Tabby's doc, you can see there are multiple possibilities, multiple ways to install it. Install with Docker, either via CUDA if you have a compatible NVIDIA GPU and need to use the graphics cards processor for it to function. Remember, it is powered by artificial intelligence. You can also run it with the CPU. That's nothing complicated, the command line. Well, here docker run, you have to launch docker beforehand and then the docker daemon and then you can run on port 8080, the ball that will spin in server mode and then we'll see how to exploit it in client mode. You can run it like this via docker, you can also run it like this via docker compose. Same thing, tabby ml. And if I go to tabby's docker project, there is the documentation. I see a little bit the versions that are there. And if I look at the level of tags and versions, I see that it's all MD64, so it works on Intel architectures. On an ARM architecture, I won't be able to run it this way. Couldn't launch as a Docker container. So if you have Intel and you're not on a Mac or you're on a Mac Intel, I recommend either going through a Docker Compose. I made videos on Docker. You can switch to Docker Compose like that. Otherwise, launch it with the command line make the doc. I'll install it as a draft because Apple M1 and M2 are the best thing to do. It's to do a draft install and install it like that since it's available on the draft repositories. It can also be deployed via hugging face spaces. I've never done that so I can't tell you more about it. And there are other GPU providers and frameworks like Modal and Skypilot. Same thing, these are things I haven't used so I won't dwell on them. So I'm going to install it with a brew install tabby ml tabby tabby. That's how it's indicated in the documentation. He will retrieve the latest version, which is version 0.7, and install it. Then to launch it, well, here is the command, I'm not making it up. So I use the metal serve device because I'm on a Mac M1, M2, M3 with the default model called Starcoder. We'll see later to use another example model. So I launch it and it will start listening on a local address on port 8080. If installed via Docker, it's the same. You'll see you'll have the open port 8080 on the server or machine where you installed and launched it and you can access it later. How to access it. Now that it's running, Tabby is running, it works, he's happy. And the interesting part is that we need to install a client. And this client can be installed either in Visual Studio or in other IDEs like IntelliJ Platform or in Veeam. So Veeam, NeoVeeam, I won't discuss it, it's in the docs. IntelliJ, same, I don't use it so I won't discuss it. I'll show you something common, the most common code in Visual Studio code. 
for this it's simple go to visual studio code you have little squares on the left which offer extensions so there are plenty of extensions and you look for tabby there you will see a small cat a small tiger something like that there and there you go, he explains that Tabby is a self-hosted development assistant which uses AI and can suggest multi-line code or complete functions in real time, etc. To install, click on install. After installation, you'll see Tabby appearing at the bottom right. Minimize the window by reducing its size. Close any other windows except Tabby. Here we can have it in automatic mode or manual mode, so there you go. If you click on manual, you'll need the alt backslash command combination to auto-complete the code. Otherwise, you leave it in automatic mode. It's the simplest thing. Just press tab to auto-complete. We'll see that together. What's interesting is to go into settings, so I increase size a bit too. Extensions I can hide, so in tabby settings we need to give 2-3 info. So if you enter the URL that is given to you here for listening at the console simply, so for me it's 0 .0 0 0.0.0.2.8080. .0 if I go here in the agent settings, we can see that the default endpoint is also a local address, 8082. I can uncomment it or manually put the thing in the file. So there you go, I'll leave HTTP in front, that's all there is to it. Automatic completion. Style's good, it's very nice. There you go, that's done. So now if I go back to my old classic studio, I'm going to write a new script. I'll take a Python file, and when I create a new file, well you see it puts me, I'm gonna put that aside. We're going to watch him roll like that, the little server there, there you go. So he tells me to press command I to ask GitHub Copilot chat to do something. Because I also have GitHub Copilot, but we won't take that into account. We're just going, I'm just going to do a little script. Hi world, for instance. So this I'm composing it, no issue. And there I'll make, for instance, a function. So I'll do function space, it auto completes for me. You see, I have a little hello world echo. This is not generated by Copilot as I've disabled it, but by Tabby. If you look closely, you'll see Tabby turning. The small indentation there, it is going to begin rotating when I commence utilizing it. So it is my fault I made a mistake, the function does not exist in Python, it is actually in script shell. That's why he saw it as a script shell. So I'll restart, I'll just use def because that's how you define a function in Python. High print, high world, so there you go, now he gets it. And then I have to test it to see if it works. No main function, so I'll add it here. No need to actually add it, just make small spaces, small entries. And he will actually understand what is missing in my code, so I just press tab to auto-complete the main function and he will run it with the hello, so if I run it here it will display hello world. But if I wanted to give him something more specific, for example, instead of saying hello world, I would like him to ask the user for his name and display, hello followed by the name, I can put a hashtag here and specify, let's say comment a little what I want. So I can say, for example, ask the user what her name is and then print hello name, there you go. Then I proceed to enter and he actually understands the code and finally comprehends my request in a comment somewhere and will propose that solution to me. Name equal, so here I can make a table and it will accept everything. Start typing, typing over a little bit of what he says if there are things I don't agree with. Here, print hello name. If I throw it, it will ask me for my name, Manu, enter hello Manu. So it's a copilot, let's say a budget version. If you don't want to subscribe, it's cool. Since we are dealing with nice models, since they are code oriented, we can still get interesting results. So, on the codes that are supported by Tabby, there is the list here in the doc. We have Rust, Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, Golang, Ruby, Java, Kotlin, and C, and C++ since version 0 0.8. None of this is supported. C Sharp, CSS, Lua, PHP, etc. It's not necessary for now. Now what is also interesting is being able to change the model because for now I launched with the standard model, the Starcoder 1B, but see with other models they have other licenses etc. We can very well use for example the code llamas if we want or have a more cat model. If I take back my little tabby server that is running, I stop it so the tabby no longer works on Visual Studio. I have here the tabby ML Starcoder 1B model and if I replace that with tabby ML code llama 7B, it will automatically retrieve the code llama model from tabby on the hugging face part of Tabby and it will download the 6.67 gigabytes that will be useful to us to test its solution. Will be helpful to test that. We will test Apricot manually if you want with auto completion using Tabby. While it's downloading, what's interesting actually with these model stories is that if you have more powerful machines, you can also take models that are a bit more performant. 
So if you have a small machine, a small graphics processing unit, etc., well, there you go, small graphics cards, the 1B and 3B models are highly commendable. If you have more powerful graphics cards, more powerful GPUs, etc., it is better to go for 7 or 13B. So that means 7 billion parameters or 13 billion parameters, which will offer more choices, more diversity in the responses. While downloading, I suggest examining Tabby's config, which could be interesting. The server, however, is open, it's running, no problem. But if you are in the client settings here in Visual Studio Code, I showed you earlier where we put the URL and the local companies here, but you know, the config TOML file, we access it here via the agent settings workbench. And we're going to take a look at what it actually offers because right now I haven't commented anything. He was using the default stuff, but obviously we have the endpoint here that we can specify. We just have to uncomment the thing and tell it here you're going to go to 0 0.0, 0, 0.0, 0.0. If I want, I can specify the token if it was requested when launching the server. We have the possibility here to add custom headers, custom header requests. I haven't used this, so I won't dwell on it. However, I believe you can utilize it to pass extra verification values or parameters when integrating Tabi into another framework that requires enhanced security. For instance, you can verify the source of a click on a link or similar actions. What is intriguing is the compression in this situation because we can provide Tabby with additional time to submit compression requests. By default, we are at 4 hours. 4,000 is equivalent to 4 hours. So that means he thinks very quickly and proposes something right away. If you want to leave more time to think and propose something, you need to increase the number of seconds. So for example, if I put 10 here, that makes me 10,000. So it can take up to 10 seconds to suggest something in completion. Logs exist, enable log level if any issues. Removed hashtag in front of completion due to presence of sections as it is important. Same here, forgot to remove in front of server. Logs, I was saying logs the same. Choose log level, silent, error or debug. For instance, say you only display errors. And there is everything that is gathered for utilization. Here, this is particular to Tabby, indicating that it fetches information about your system, the quantity of completions, the quantity of accepted completions that you acknowledge, the latencies in HTTP requests and so forth. By default, it is not enabled. Here, if you want to be sure, you remove that and you really leave it at disable. However, please note that Tabby, or at least the people behind Tabby, do not retrieve the generated codes nor any information that would allow them to identify you or steal your source code. That is not the objective. It is truly about collecting statistics on the usage of the extension and the server. There you go. It's recovered. I saved it. Here I see that the model has been downloaded. So now Tabby is launched on the Code Llama model. I suggest we test it right away. Creating a new script, adding a comment, asking for the user's name, using def to indicate a function, and Tabby is running, so it takes longer as I set it to 10 seconds. It's looking for the best thing, and since the comment asked for the user's name, now I can say you ask for their name, stored in name, and then specify something by telling it to display a random joke with the user's name. Same, he will take 10 seconds to think and then he suggests a function called random point choice jokes. Don't have that thing now. Basically need a table of jokes that I would need to define somewhere up here. And so here I can simply create a table of jokes. So if I write joke 1 here, he will suggest joke 2, joke 3, etc. And then here I have the random that I didn't import so I can just do import. I'm waiting and he suggests importing random. He understood. And there it shows. So I'm going to launch it, so I'm missing the main function, so I'll just enter a line break. Same, it takes 10 seconds, which can be long, to display that to me. I remove the thing that remains underneath, there you go, and I throw it. He asks for my name, says, hi Manu, here's a joke, tells me joke 1, defined in the array, that's it. So, it's not a tool that makes coffee like GitHub Copilot or even ChatGPT, but it's still a good autocomplete tool. We will try one last model because I saw that there were more conversational models than code and that, that can be interesting. Since I'm on a slightly more powerful model code llama, I feel my computer is blowing a little more because I'm in 7B. So now I stop it and I'm going to put a template. So I saw that there were Mistral 7B models, which is more of a cat model. So we're going to test this. I haven't tested it yet. We will do, instead of putting model here, we will simply do chat model. 
there I put the name of the model so tabml mistral 7b and I add it behind model and I put starcoder 1b which is the thing I used at the very beginning. Like this I have two models. I have the cat model and the model used for self compression. I went around with Tabby, we saw how to use the default model, how to use a code llama model, how we installed the client etc. I will still demonstrate to you a novelty that is present in the most recent version which is version 0.7.0. What I missed and saw while preparing this video is that it's possible to launch a web server too. So you enter the same command, tabby serve, buy device metal if on silicone architecture, otherwise not worth it, then enter the model you usually use for example we'll take the basic thing starcoder 1b and add web server at the end. It will start the server which will listen on port 8080 like earlier except that now I can access it through my browser. And I come across this interface that asks me to create an admin account. What I did and so I get the URL, I have the token that is present here so it generated a non-persistent token for the current connection so it's a temporary thing we'll say and from there I can manage my clusters, in any case see the model used, the database used, regenerate if I need a registration token and above all manage my teams. It's interesting because if you set up a Tabby server you'll be able to add members to it. Invite people who can use Tabby. Where it gets interesting is that there's an API in particular. I haven't told you about it either but the server now has an API and we can develop something else on top of it like this. So there I demonstrated a client for Visual Studio, however if you possess alternative tools or require code generation in any manner you can easily consult this API and proceed to code according to your preferences. After that it resembles OpenAI API with completions, chat completions, that kind of stuff, there's beta in there. That is why we can also utilize a Mistral type model since we can invoke it through the API. Here, and one thing I haven't shown you either and I will be finished, is that on the Tabby GitHub project you have the releases. We can install it via docker as I was telling you via homebrew so these are some classic things from the tabby documentation but here in the releases you have the latest version with this famous web server parameter that we just tested. But especially here you have a little further down the binaries for your OS so there is for Windows, there is for Linux and for Apple Darwin so in Intel version I think Intel will see if it's not a universal version but here we can also recover and in the event that you solely need to test Tabby for conducting tests without the need to deploy, install and perform other related tasks etc. You have the playground on GitHub, you can open it in a playground, so in a sandbox and you'll go to Tabby's website tabby.ml.com and you'll be able to test and code directly on top of it. For instance if I input it automatically suggests autocomplete so I simply press tab and it validates for me. For playing with, for testing, the playground on tabby.ml.com. I'm done, no more excuses for not coding your dev projects, your stuff, even if you're a bad developer. Even if you're not very good, you don't know the language you're working in well. It's just the beginning for you. And if you don't have a budget for GitHub Copilot, Matabi is an excellent alternative to start getting supported let's say by AI in your everyday code etc. He lacks many things, there are features, especially at the VS extension level that are somewhat lacking which I have in tools like Cursor. For example we can have a chat, we can discuss our code with the AI, we can highlight a part of the code and ask it to make modifications or corrections. Well, we can't do that with Tabby, that's something only tools like Cursor offer. But still, for everything related to auto-completion it's pretty cool to be able to run on a local AI model and thus have access to a little bit of intelligence, I put quotes, for everything related to auto-completion. It saves time, it avoids bugs and problems, there I found it rather cool, so if you're interested listen to tabimo.com. I trust this video has captivated you and I extend my best wishes for a joyful holiday season. No video next week as I'm on a little vacation too, I'll see you in January, go bye and in advance happy new year.